Mark was Schumacher is a legend of Formula 1 history, winning several world titles and collecting 91 race wins along the way of his 19 season long career, cementing him as an icon of the motor racing and the sporting world itself. But out of these seven titles, one is hotly debated. The 1994 title that he claimed after a crash with Damon Hill at the final race of the season at Australia. But that's not what we're talking about today, because we're talking about the Option 13 controversy. But first we need to start talking about driver aids. Driver aids are devices that help drivers at the end of the 1980s and start of the 1990s. Such devices were first investigated by Lotus at the beginning of the 1980s, mainly the use of active suspension, but were quickly dropped due to them not being able to pull it off on the car. Jumping to the end of the decade, and Williams started to play around with active suspension, traction control and anti-lock brakes. These concepts were put onto the car, this meant that in 1991, Williams were the quickest car on the grid, but often had 2022 Ferrari levels of reliability, which led to Senna Clinch in the title. One year later, a Manson robbed away from the field to win the championship by miles, but there were concerns that these drive raids would fail and cause a huge crash, leading to the belief that heading into 1994, they were dangerous. On top of this, this was done to try and prevent the film from being level, which is a non concept to think about after the 2022 regulation changes. As a result, all driver aids were stripped away at the start of the 1994 season and refueling was introduced once more to the swap. I'm sure nothing to do with what I've just said will cause any problems or major controversies in the nearby future. The teams arrived in Brazil for the Open Race of the 1994 season. Before the season had already started, there had been a lot of change, especially at the top with Frost retiring for the second and final time after winning the title with Williams the previous season, and this void was filled by another great, Ayrton Senna. Senna had been trying to get a contract with Williams for years, but due to a clause in a um, Frost contract, he would not race with Williams if Senna was his teammate, for reasons that could take up his own video. As a result, Williams had to line up with a three-time world champion and a quick new driver who had something to prove. These drivers were Ayrton Senna and Damon Hill. But moving into the 1994 Brazilian Grand Prix weekend, Senna took pole by the three tenths of a second ahead of future great Michael Schumacher and headed into the race it appeared that Senna would pull away his dominant Williams and would destroy the field. By the first round of pit stops, Senna had a four second gap over Schumacher and they pitted on the same lap. Both drivers took on fuel, but somehow Schumacher emerged ahead. But how? Well, we'll come back to that later. The Benetton did have a smaller fuel tank though, due to it having a V8 engine, but that would not normally gain 4 seconds in a pit stop when Senna did not have any errors. As Senna pushed to catch up, he spun next to him Jun Sao and stalled the car and retired. Schumacher won, having lapped the entire field in that race. The Pacific Grand Prix was also on the calendar that year at Ada, and once again Senna was on pole, this time two tenths ahead of Schumacher, and on the opening lap, Senna was hit by Hacker and spun into the gravel, reaching the car. Having been knocked out of two races this season where he should have wiped the floor with the field, he was slightly annoyed. He famously stood at turn one for many laps after this, listening to the end notes of the Benetton, having suspicions about the use of drive rides. He went back to the garage and spoke to the mechanics, and he was convinced through the engine notes that the 1994 Benetton car was not in fact within the rules. F1 rolled into Imola for the San Marino Grand Prix and almost immediately the weekend had a black mark next to it as young driver Rubens Barrichello hit a curb in the first qualifying session at the very anti as was launched into the air hitting the tyre barrier with an impact that measured 95g. As a result he swallowed his tongue but was luckily saved with quick medical attention. When he was taken to hospital Senna arrived and he saw Rubens to see if he was good as they were very close before heading back to the track. On the Sunday, rookie Roland Ratzenberger damaged his front wing on his warm-up lap before starting his qualifying lap, and as he was pushing, he headed towards a Villeneuve kink. His front wing failed, causing him to hit the wall at near on 200 miles an hour, and this caused him to suffer a basal skull fracture, killing him even before the car stopped. Once again, this sent a ripple through the F1 community, and this is where the event should have been cancelled, but it wasn't, and then this race became even more infamous. On Sunday, Senna lined up on pole once again, while Simtech only lined up with one car in order to show respect to Roland, and as the five red lights went out, there was a monumental crash that brought out the safety car. This crash ended eight spectators and a policeman. On lap six, the safety car came in and Senna pulled away, but one lap later, F1 would change forever. At the start of lap seven, Senna entered Tamborello and hit the outside wall, which caused the wheel to hit his helmet and two-piece suspension ended up penetrating his helmet. Senna was rushed to hospital, where he was pronounced dead soon after. This sent shockwaves throughout the sporting world. One driver was lucky to still be alive, and two drivers were lost within the span of a weekend. Schumacher won the race, but the effect of this weekend would be felt in the racing community for years to come. 
As a result of this man's suspicions, Bennett and Ferrari and McLaren were all had to hand in their data to show whether they used drive rights or not. Ferrari complied immediately and nothing of suspicion was found. McLaren and Benson, however, did not hand their data over in time and were fined. In fact, it took people coming to the Benson office to make them hand their data over. McLaren were found to be using an engine mapping software that automated downshifts, but did not face punishment as it was a loophole they exploited in the rulebook, and the FIA went, fair enough, but it will be banned for next year. Benetton, on the other hand, well. It took many months for this to be investigated, and in that time, accusations began to ramp up, and this was no longer a theory held by few. In fact, many believed it. There was an engine code on these laptops, and on those laptops in question, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there was nothing, but if you continue scrolling, there will be no option 11, no option 12, but there was an option 13. This had launch control, but Benson admitted to this code existed, but denied it could be usable. The FIA ended up believing this, and the FIA ended up releasing a statement saying that Benson was not guilty of anything. As a result, Burton ends up standing in the championship to much controversy. Now, the rest of the season was pretty dramatic too. Here are the cliff notes for the most important event. At the British Grand Prix, Schumacher got disqualified. This was due to him overtaking Hill on the formation lap, and after being given a five second tyre party, he refused to serve it. As a response, he was given a black flag, but he refused to come in too, and as an early Christmas present, he landed up getting a two race ban. The German Grand Prix had two major events happen. Firstly, Schumacher got disqualified because his plank was too warm during the race. And secondly, Benetton wasn't actually within the rules on the fuel flow limit because they had removed the filter leading them to have 12.5% more fuel put into the car per second to have a quicker pit stop. That explained the Brazilian Grand Prix and that's that famous picture of Jos Verstappen sitting in the car whilst it's on fire. 2023, Max is on fire, but in 1994, Verstappen was on fire, quite literally. They went to Adelaide for the final race of the season, and Schumacher had a one-point advantage over Damon Hill at the top of the Drivers' Championship. As Schumacher was heading through a left-hander, he hit the wall, damaged his rear right suspension, and Hill was a couple of seconds back. He did not know, he gained the time due to the error, and he dived up the inside. Schumacher turned in, hitting Hill, launched the Benetton into the air and it sent Michael out of the race. Due to the incident, Damon returned to the pit lane where it was found out that he had terminal suspension damage, rendering him out of the race as well. As a result, Schumacher won his first world title and this is going to be remembered most likely for potentially unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm sure that in the future they won't head to Jerez in similar circumstances whilst Michael was up against a Canadian driver with a one point lead in the championship. I'm sure nothing will happen like that ever again. 1994 was a dramatic season after all and this was the biggest controversy to ever happen in F1. The lasting effect of this will live in the record books forever but this is one of the most interesting stories to happen in motorsport history. Anyway, this has been the 1994 Option 13 controversy. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe and I'll see you later.